Hello, it is Sunday, October 10th, 2021. I am Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It is a Sunday crossword today, the longest, cro- well, usually the longest solve of the week. It's certainly the biggest grid of the week, and those two things generally correlate. So we'll see how we fare today. Um, quickly, I will mention the Patreon campaign. I'll get this over with uh, faster than usual because we've got such a long puzzle today, but I did put live the first uh, competition puzzle solve from the Boss Words Fall Themeless League yesterday. So I solved that one faster than I solved these. There's a little, I still talk through the answers a bit, but there's less commentary than usual because I was trying to make a little bit of an effort towards speed solving since that is the point of the competition. I might try and solve next week's a little bit faster and see if my, see if my patrons are, are uh, willing to, to endure that. We'll see how it goes. Um, but that went up yesterday along with the uh, mini speed solve puzzles on Friday and other things. So go check that out at patreon.com slash daily solve. So uh, today, um, there are actually a few, quite a few comments from yesterday's Saturday puzzle, which as it turns out, the constructor, August Lee Kovacs, who I, I didn't recognize, was in fact a debut constructor. And not only that, as Remy points out in a comment on yesterday's puzzle, he is only 14 years old, which is uh, remarkable. So well done to August. I assume he has a long crossword constructing career ahead of him. And we have a comment from Atreus Monk, who has three, in fact, Uh, bits of knowledge from yesterday's puzzle. This person says, from hearing my dad talk about naval enlistment, he was supposed to have part of his time be shore duty and part be sea duty. And sea duty was one of the answers from yesterday's puzzle. And I wasn't quite sure what it was. And Atreus Monk clarifies, this is postings that were on the land, shore duty, versus on the sea, ship or sub duty. He did sort of cheat the sea duty, though, by being assigned to Adak, one of the islands off Alaska, which counted as both. Hmm. And then Atreus Monk continues, Nats is short for the Washington Nationals, that's the baseball team, and ACL is the anterior cruciate ligament. Sprains and tears of that ligament are a common sports injury across many sports. So there we go. And uh, regarding sports, actually... George Adams says, I believe splitter is short for split-fingered fastball, so-called because the index and middle fingers are splayed across opposite sides of the ball as pitchers release it. My hands aren't big enough to do that. It seems there have been more baseball-related clues and answers than usual lately. I wonder if that's because the MLB playoffs are underway with the World Series at the end of the month, or perhaps it will change once the New York Yankees have been eliminated. And that reminded me, that comment reminded me of a funny comment from the Discord server, the Discord chat server for The Daily Solve, which you can join regardless of whether you're a Patreon supporter by uh, following the invitation link to the Discord in the description field underneath the video, although Patreon supporters also get additional access. But this was a comment from Prof on that server who said, in crossword world, there are two three-letter athletes, Bobby Orr, hockey, and Mel Ott, baseball, just like there are only two musicians. Brian Eno and Yoko Ono. And that is so true. So um, fitting in this time of baseball clues. All right. Cody Eagles points out that Libra's symbol in the Zodiac is in fact scales. So I was on the wrong track entirely. And when that, now that that's mentioned, of course, I recognize Libra as scales, but I was trying to think of an animal with scales, a dragon or something. I don't know. I was on the completely the wrong track. So Cody Eagles says, Libra symbol in the zodiac is in fact scales, so I think you got it right when you thought that the up was referring to the constellation in the sky. It usually represents balance, as you'll frequently see scales used as imagery representing justice in courts systems, to show how they'll purportedly anyway give a fair and balanced trial to those accused of crimes. And Brian D. follows up that comment by saying, it gets its name from the Latin word for weight, which is why pounds, weight, is abbreviated to LB. So there we go. More good knowledge. And finally, regarding Eco Eco, which was the most confounding answer of the puzzle for me, the New Orleans standard Eco Eco, Kathy Swope says, this was first recorded in the 1950s as Giacomo. It was not popular. Then in the 1960s, the group The Dixie Cups made it a hit titled Eco Eco. Malcolm John Rebenack, aka Dr. John, recorded in the 1970s with subsequent versions in the 80s. 
then the last big hit version in 2001 by Captain Jack. And Sun Cop follows up that comment by saying, the Dixie Cups versions has an interesting history unto itself. The singers knew it from their grandmother, having sung it when they were growing up, not even knowing its proper title, Giacomo. So all very interesting. Plenty of, uh, plenty of room for interesting knowledge from this interesting debut puzzle from a 14-year-old constructor. So let's get on to today's um, solve. Oh, I should mention this funny sweater I'm wearing. This is my official House of Commons Christmas jumper, which I'm wearing a little bit early because it came in the mail yesterday and I'm, I'm enjoying its debut wear. Can't quite see it, but there's the um, portcullis, uh, Houses of Parliament portcullis logo there down below, below the frame of the, of the camera. So anyway, that's what, that's this goofy thing I'm wearing. So this puzzle, Sunday, crossword by Brandon Copy, that is certainly a name I have seen, uh, definitely an accomplished constructor, is edited by Will Shorts, as always, and is interestingly and tantalizingly entitled Clue the Movie. Clue the Movie. So this will be either, well, I don't know if it'll be one of these things, but I suspect it will be either a puzzle themed around the film Clue, but I think more likely it's going to be themed around movies with clues in the title, or there's some way to make the titles indicate something about mysteries or clues or something. I think that's more likely than the most straightforward version, which would be sort of characters from the movie Clue or something, because that would be the same as the names of characters from the board game Clue. So I don't know what would make it the movie. So my suspicion is probably movie titles will be involved in this, but we'll see. We'll just have to see. Are we ready to get started? I say yes. Okay. Syllables when you forget the words. Could be ums or ahs or ers. Could be plenty of things, but it probably ends with an S. Exasperated parents retort. Says me, perhaps? An exa I, mean, I mean, because of that S, I'm thinking it might be says me, a parent might eventually say out of anger, but we're going to check some crosses because that's a bit speculative. Simile center. So a simile is like a metaphor, but is explicitly pointed out, I suppose. Uh, like a something is as a something else, maybe as a, as opposed to a metaphor in which uh, you just refer to the, the metaphorical meaning without drawing a explicit comparison. I don't know if, I don't know if this is right either. These feel like, this feels like a bit of a reach on top of a reach, but we'll see. Pet that should come with a lint roller. Not sure, a very hairy pet? I don't, not really sure. Given that, maybe as such. So you might say, well, given that's true, this other thing follows. As such, that thing follows. So then syllables, when you forget the words, oh, it's none of the things I said, because this, when you forget the words, this is referring to song lyrics. So you might sing la la la, that sort of thing, laws perhaps. And then, oh, okay, well, here we go. Here we have field of dreams in italics and right, right underneath it, I can see guys and dolls. So th those are two film titles. So clue the movie, oh, maybe clue, Maybe it's even more straightforward. Maybe clue simply refers to crossword clues. I don't know why that didn't occur to me when I was considering what clue might mean. So what does that mean? Perhaps maybe this answer will be a description of the film Field of Dreams. I don't know. I don't have enough information to know, but probably there will be a revealer somewhere in the lower... Uh, lower right hand corner of the clue in the acrosses as predicted by Lyle's law. And that might give us some more information. But for now, let's just try and fill in some grid. Lucrative and undemanding is a cushy job. A cushy job might be lucrative, well-paid and undemanding. A fictional brand of rocket powered roller skates could be Acme as used by Wile E. Coyote in cartoons. Clueless protagonist, oh, Cher, I think, is the name of the protagonist in Clueless. I only saw that film for the first time a couple of years ago. Pet that should come with a lint roller. Right, what is this? Oh, a, a lap cat, perhaps? 
What is that implying? If you're sitting on your lap and you're sort of petting them, I don't... This is probably very obvious that I'm not quite seeing it. So field of dreams. Oh, oh. Oh, so a field of dreams might be psychoanalysis? There we go, right. So this is describing literally a field, an area of study or practice that contends with dreams. So psychoanalysis, a, psycho, a psychoanalyst might interpret your dreams. Very clever. Okay, so Clue the movie, I think, I think it very straightforwardly means that these movie titles are clues and we simply have to interpret them as clues. I think it's a, it may be as straightforward as that. Blank Lawrence College, Sarah Lawrence College is the name of a university in the United States. Flu like ashy, maybe if, if you're sort of ashen, not sure. Confucian philosophy looks like the Tao. Singer Rita Ora, I've heard of that person, although I don't know any of their music. Floating terror of the sea. Um, floating terror of the sea. Is this some sort of ghostly ship or something? I'm not sure. Many social media users. Sharers, perhaps? You might share things on social media. The universe has an estimated 10 to the 82nd power of them. Atoms, I suppose. Wow. Sort of astonishing to imagine estimating the number of atoms in the universe. That's a little bit overwhelming. A floating terror of the sea. Oh, man of war. Right. It's sort of jellyfish looking thing. I don't know if they're related to jellyfish or not. Ingredient in a McDonald's McFlurry. Um, is it an Oreo? The most common confection in a New York Times crossword, along with our our sports players and musicians that we have uh, defined earlier. As an ode is the official poem of the New York Times crossword. The Oreo is the official confection. Donkey with a pinned on tail. Oh, Eeyore from um, Winnie the Pooh. Two in a million. Could be the letter L. Two L's in the word million L's. A mouse. Eek. As is... I guess, sort of classically said in cartoons. The Kiss Painter. Not sure off the top of my head, what is this? Magazine co-founded in 1945 by Helene Gordon Lazareff. Probably L Magazine, I would think, E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And blank S, that's right, Spanish. Could it be ESO? What is this here? Seasonal Winds. Oh, maybe this is Asa, because this could be Santa Ana winds, a little counterpart to our El Nino weather event from a few days ago. Um, I do want to double check that with crosses, though. Organization with an annual code breaker challenge. It could be the National Security Administration, perhaps. There are two similarly named bodies in the United States. There's the National Security agency or administration, I'm not sure which. And then there's also the National Security Council, although I doubt the National Security Council would have a sort of public competition. So it's probably the NSA. Here we have successfully uses a password. Oh, I would want that to be logs in. So maybe Santa Ana is incorrect. Let's get rid of that for now. So this also might not be the CIA. Is this Klimt, maybe? Oh, maybe this is ASO after all, and then seasonal winds maybe is monsoons. I was way ahead of myself with Santa Ana. I was I sort of had El Nino in mind and the sort of, I don't know, there was something that struck me as linguistically similar there. Oh, this is N again, though. So maybe it is still NSA. And then here we have fam girl, could be sis for sister. Melodious, Erios. Same root as aria, a song from an opera, opera, I would assume. Place to develop one's chops. Place to develop one's chops. Is this... So, I mean, chops is your, your skills, but I wonder if there's something slightly punny going on, like pork chops or something. I mean, it could be a dojo. Uh, probably not. 
Beyonce chart topple, topper, single blank, put a ring on it. Single ladies, put a ring on it. That I certainly know. And place to develop one's chops. Well, hmm. I mean, maybe it is dojo. Similar sounding phrase such as I scream for ice cream. Oh, so there's a name for that phenomenon. I wonder what that is. I don't think I'm familiar with it. Innate, inborn, or part of a makeup test, question mark. So I actually don't know. <laughs> There's a pun indicator here, that question mark, and I don't know which version of this is intended to be the one that is obvious and therefore subverted by the question mark. I don't know if this is implying a makeup test, in other words, a an exam that you take later because you missed the first exam, or a makeup test on one's face, a sort of screen test or something with makeup. Those both seem plausible to me, so I don't really know which one is being subverted by the question mark. Uh, so I'm going to skip it for now. Texting tech briefly, SMS. I think simple message service or something that might be something like that. Simple message syntax or system. I'm not sure. Okay, so here we have guys and dolls. And if we treat this as a clue, what might it mean? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to move on. Cross my heart. Looks like I swear it, maybe. Oh, and that is Klimt. Gustav Klimt, I think. Okay, let's keep going. Accept eagerly with at, leap at, accept eagerly. Star Trek. Ah, Star Trek. Are these less straightforward than psychoanalysis? I might have, must have gotten lucky with that one. I wonder if this this one was intended to be a little easier or more straightforward and was put as the first one of these to help nudge the solver into the theme. I'm finding these others more difficult so far, although, I mean, you, you may well have jumped straight to it. I have not gotten there yet. I don't know if the first word is the or there. Star Trek. This whole last thing looks like maybe one word to me. Could end with an R. Restless desire. Embarrassing public episode. Oops. And double crossed and half baked. Double crossed and half baked. They're idioms, I guess. Star Trek. Could it mean stars and celebrities? Oh, the red carpet. Yes, it does. There we go. Okay. That took me a while. Oh, so a restless desire is an itch. There we go. And what is this? Product for one who wonders, am I expecting? Um, is there a name for a pregnancy test that is a three-letter acronym, perhaps? Some tourist spots in San Francisco are piers, as in wharfs. I don't know if those are the same thing. I think they maybe are. <laughs> embarrassing public episode. Oh, a scene. Don't make a scene. That is an embarrassing public, public episode. A trendy home gym purchase. Oh, a Peloton. The very, as it says, very trendy brand of, I guess, internet-connected treadmills. Oh, no, they're not treadmills. They're stationary bicycles, aren't they? Okay, to get ready for vacation is to pack. Civil rights activist Baker, is it Etta Baker? Let's check the crosses. No, Ella Baker, probably. Let's check the crosses. Letters from Iwo Jima. Letters from, oh, kanji, Japan, the, uh, one of the Japanese writing systems. That's very clever. Insurance department, cl the claims department. Baseball family name much seen in crosswords. Wow. Now that is really giving up on a piece of crosswordies to just <laughs> to just say, look, I'm not even coming up with a unique clue for this. It's the one that's in crosswords all the time. And it is in crosswords all the time. I think it's ALU, A-L-O-U. 
Although that doesn't look great here, does it? Oh, maybe that's not how you spell Peloton. P-E-L-O-T-O-N, because this clue is Mystic's board, which is a, a, what, a Ouija board, I think it's strangely pronounced, despite how it's spelled, Ouija board. Perfectly comfortable, could be at ease, and then what is this? Cardinal's hat in Britain, ah, so it's a mitre, whereas the American English spelling of this would be M-I-T-E-R, the British would be R-E. And to fumble for words, and so here's an example of uh, again, much like how Alu, family name much seen in crosswords, is a, a very straightforward version of this clue as, a, as opposed to something, um, I don't know, maybe more misleading or, or clever. Similarly, in Britain is about the most straightforward version of this sort of indicator in a clue that suggests you should be using the British English spelling. It's just telling us, whereas often it might say something like, I don't know. This doesn't work because this is a cardinal, not an archbishop. But if you imagined, let's say it was something like Archbishop of Canterbury's hat or something like that. And the fact that it's in Canterbury would be the part that suggests it, it should be the British English spelling. Whereas you might simply interpret that as referring to the Archbishop of Canterbury without thinking about what it means for the uh, dialect, I suppose. Anyway, to fumble for words. Um... Maybe to air? That doesn't really seem right. I wonder if at ease is correct. Here we have speed reader. Speed reader with a question mark, so some kind of pun. Speed reader. Oh, a radar, as in a speed a, a police officer with a speed trap. And then fumble for words. I don't know. Eat? What else could this be? Not very many words will fit here. Fumble for words. I don't know. I'm sorry. Pop in the fridge. A soda. That ease must be incorrect. This must be wrong. Perfectly comfortable because pop in the fridge looks like soda pop in the refrigerator. Soda. And then fumble for words. And then here we have perfectly comfortable again. And that is at home. Make yourself at home. Make yourself perfectly comfortable. There we go. Fumble for words. Oh, maybe to haw, to hem and haw? I don't know about that. Oh, what's this? A man for all seasons. So that's, I think, Thomas More is who that's actually referring to, but not in this case. A man for all seasons. A weather... No. Um, meteorolo meteorologist? Meteorologist is what I was trying to say. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't know. Let's, let's go back to it with some, when we have some crosses. Here we have a, a jerk face. <laughs> a, a meanie, perhaps? When you see something like jerk face, which is obviously a slang term of some sort, typically you're going to match the, the slang in the, uh, in the clue. And I think in a well-written clue, you'll even match the level of slanginess in other, which is why I thought maybe Meany might be correct. Although, as someone pointed out a couple days ago, now that I've now that I've subjected this to this sort of uh, post hoc justification, it probably means I'm wrong. Okay, four X World Series winner Martinez, four times World Series winner Martinez. Oh, this is kind of familiar. Tito, maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, Top Gun, Top gun. Is there a gun on top, like an anti-aircraft gun or something? I don't know. Ancient work that describes the sacred tree Yggdrasil. I think that's one of the Eddas, maybe? One of the... Is that an Icelandic thing? Or it could be a saga? Spy novelist Dayton. Oh, here, I think this is Len Dayton, so maybe it is Edda. And then Woodworker's Tool. Uh, something vain, something maybe, increased into something much more valuable. Traded up, maybe? I don't know if that necessarily implies much more valuable, though. I think that might be over-inferring there. A tax pro, for short, is a CPA, a certified public accountant, or a chartered public accountant. 
weave off the shoulder. Can this be a hairstyle maybe? Not sure. So well, that certainly isn't traded up if that's CPA. So that's at least something, a deduction that has been made at the very least. Okay, let's let's check this down. Luxurious and sounds of doubt. Oh, it could be ums or uhs. The thing that I thought maybe one across was going to be. Those both have you. So does that help if something is innate? Don't know. And then here we have luxurious. Oh, swank maybe. And a parrot's sound awk, maybe? Is that, is that how you would sort of write a parrot's sound? I'm not really sure. Part of a makeup test. I'm not very confident about that. Innate. I'm not very confident about swank either, to be totally honest with you. Let's keep going through the crossword. Tightly affixed. Not sure. Blank for me, thanks. None for me, thanks. I think that would be oh, Tino Martinez, maybe? More info below. C note, perhaps? You might see that written C note indicating more info below. Gave as gossip. Talked? That seems that seems too generic for as gossip. 1930s migrant to California. Oh, I think this is um Oki, people from Oklahoma who um migrated to California. And Hershey's Chocolate and Toffee Bar. I'm not sure about that one, actually. The Imitation Game. Oh, Simon Says. That's quite clever. Simon Says, a game in which you literally imitate uh, the other person in the game. Oh, Hershey's Chocolate and Toffee Bar. This actually looks familiar with the SK. Scar or Score? I think it's, I think it's maybe Score... Don't know, don't know that I've ever had a score bar. Gave as gossip. Yeah, uh, I'm going to leave that blank just in case it is a scar. Weave off the shoulder. Oh, maybe it is something hair. And gave as gossip. Big no-nos. Yeah, I don't know. Not sure. Not confident enough yet to put that in there. Okay, increased into something much more valuable. Well, this could end with a D with that Y there. It kind of looks like it might be that. Oh, parlayed maybe? And then woodworker's tool. Oh, a panel saw? I don't know. Top gun. Oh, t-shirt? I don't know what else would start this way. T-shirt, top gun, t-shirt. What on earth does that mean? <laughs> Is there a picture of a firearm on a t-shirt? Is that something? What does that mean if the t-shirt is the top? Is it a gun meaning a bicep? I don't know. Weave off the shoulder. And tightly affixed. Oh, glued maybe. Oh, oh, weave off the shoulder is pigtail. Okay, so it was hair, but doesn't use the word hair. Big no-nos are taboos. And blank compensation, subject of modern debate. Oh, CEO compensation, I suppose that is something that is debated. Spanish marinade a, could be adobo, perhaps. Okay, what is this? Top Gun, t-shirt, camera, is it? T-shirt, can... This must be obvious to, to some people because there are so few things it could be. T-shirt. What on earth is that? Sounds of doubt. It probably does end with an S. Luxurious. If this were swank, this would be an N. T-shirt. Oh, T-shirt cannon. Oh, that's actually extremely clever. Wow. Top gun. A gun that, that shoots tops or a cannon that fires T-shirts. A T-shirt cannon. Um, which is a thing. That is a thing that at expos and things, people will shoot t-shirts out of a t-shirt cannon. Okay, so let's see. Maybe this isn't Etta. This looks odd here, innate. I mean, so if that were swank, the end does work, and then the parrots sound part of a makeup test. And then innate. This innate is looking odd here. 
Here we have guys and dolls, right? I never filled that in. Guys and dolls. Oh, G.I. Joes? They're little, little figures, little dolls, guys and dolls. Maybe that is. That one doesn't feel quite as clever because it looks like guys and dolls. It looks like both the guys and the dolls are the same thing. So the and the fact that it's two things joined by an and looks like a overkill slightly, but fair enough. So maybe a place to develop one's chops. Sorry, let me just check my phone. No, not important. Okay, a place to develop one's chops. Dojo, I think maybe is correct. And then innate. In Oh, in one's DNA. That's how to resolve this strange looking DN at the end. So maybe this is awk, the parrot sound. And a similar sounding phrase, such as ice cream for ice cream. Oranim, maybe? Uh, interesting. I, I'm not familiar with that word, but I'm glad to know it. Part of a makeup test. Oh, eyeshadow. Okay. So I suppose the sort of straight meaning here would be a second sitting of an exam. And then the question mark pun indicator is what should tell us, no, it's not that. It's actually the one meaning makeup on a face. So eyeshadow. So uh, there we go. Moving on. Tender areas could be sores, I suppose, or yeah, maybe. The fifth element. Oh, <laughs> I assume this will be literally the fifth element on the periodic table. That's pretty good. Is it boron, maybe? Noun making suffix. Uh, ness, right? So, um, um, I don't know. Gentleness, for instance. The ness turns the adjective gentle into a noun, gentleness. I don't know why that was what came to mind. Okay, quaint sign word. Um, don't know, diatribe could be a rant. And here we have tender areas, maybe that is sores. And then what do we have in the crosses? Spirits. Oh, morale, high spirits, high morale. Quaint sign word could be old with an E, the sort of old timey spelling. And um, let's see, let's go back to the crosses. Sesh on Reddit. So the sesh is session, and this contracted form of it indicates that this too will be a sort of abbreviation or contraction of some kind. So an ask me anything or an AMA session happens on Reddit, the online chat website. So gave as gossip, oh, told to perhaps. And then that does confirm that score has an O, not an A, which is what I thought, but I wasn't really sure. And French fabric, oh, toile maybe? And then dodos could be morons. What was this? I sort of skipped past it. Matricidal figure of Greek myth, Orestes, looks right. Ike's domain in World War II. So Ike is Dwight D. Eisenhower, who uh, went on to become president. Um, oh, Europe, maybe? Was he... Yeah, commander in Europe actually does look right. Dostoevsky's Prince Mishkin, so the book title declares. Um, I don't... Oh, no, 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 this must not be Europe. Uh, is this The Idiot by Dostoevsky? And then Ike's Domain, I don't know what that is. So, reason the physicist stayed in bed... Uh, with a question mark, so it's a pun. So this looks like it's maybe some kind of one-liner or riddle kind of thing. The Shape of Water director. Oh, who directed The Shape of Water? I didn't actually see it. Was it so Guillermo del Toro, I think, maybe directed that movie? That sounds right. Mad Magazine cartoonist Drucker. I don't know. Why did I jump to that answer? Clue. Okay. A Man for All Seasons. Right. Okay. I never solved this. And I kept wanting it to be a sort of weather forecaster, or meteorologist. I keep stumbling on that word. Meteorologist. And there we go. But it's anyway irrelevant because that's not what this answer is. Uh, city that replaced Lagos as Nigeria's capital. Uh, was it Amman? Um, golden rule word. Oh, no. Maybe it's not. I must be wrong. What is the city that replaced Lagos as Nigeria's capital? Golden rule word. Maybe it's unto, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Caramel or hot fudge, basically. I guess they're basically a goo. 
And don't forget, when you have the or, even though there are two things that might look like a plural, the or is indicating only one of them is actually uh, where either one of them, but only one is going to be the definition here. So it's going to be a singular answer. What is this? To fumble for words. Maybe that is ha as in hem and ha. Oh, maybe this is a watcher, a man for all seasons. A, oh, a binge watcher. Wow, that's quite clever. Um, a bit, someone who watches all the seasons of a, of a television program. That's, that's very clever. Okay, predatory insect living in wood piles. I don't know. Oh, what is this? Drawer of shorts, e.g., an animator, someone who illustrates animated shorts. And a cutthroat mentality is no mercy. Spanish, listen, oye, right? Euphemistic exclamation. Um, euphemistic explanation. Exclamation, sorry. Boy, this is quite short to be a euphemism, right? I mean, a euphemism is something that uh, stands in for something that you that might be impolite, perhaps, to say directly, and it's often sort of suggestive or slightly funny. What is what would fit here in so few letters? I don't know. Okay, reasons physicist stayed in bed. Not sure. Natasha Blank, Boris's partner against Rocky and Bullwinkle. Oh, well, this uh, Boris, I think, was Boris Badenov. Natasha, don't remember, don't remember her surname. Sorry, Natasha. Some water park rides could be slides. Olympics symbol for Madrid's country. Olympics symbol for Madrid. So that's Spain. Do, do countries. I don't think I know what that means. Olympic symbol. Do countries have individual Olympics symbols? Apologies if this is a very obvious thing. I actually don't even know what that category of thing is, let alone the one that particularly applies in this case. So blank toy barn, Toy Story 2 locale. Boy, I do not remember a single thing about that movie, but based on the number of letters in the crosses, I'm wondering if it's Al's toy barn. Seems plausible. Uh, that doesn't help with Natasha, unfortunately, for me just yet. To overlie. So is that to overlap? Does that mean the same thing as overlap? I'm not sure. Mad Magazine cartoonist Drucker, still not sure. Get the juices flowing. Not sure. Wayne's World. Um... I could imagine this being Gotham if it were Bruce Wayne and his world, which is Gotham City in the Batman, I don't know, universe, I guess. But that wouldn't work here with slides. Oh, but it could be flumes, as in a log flume ride at a water park. And actually, that yeah, that would allow this to be Gotham. Interesting. So maybe that is what that is. And then fish with an elongated jaw is a gar. Candy with the slogan, not sorry. Not sorry. That's sort of an odd slogan. <laughs> um, a slogan that is an anti-apology. Color changing mug is fully, fully dark here, as is often the case on a Sunday puzzle. Okay, and the, the coffee is unfortunately lukewarm. Cameo. A, oh, a minor role. There we go. Pretty straightforward. Pre did I not look at that before? I don't think I did. Predatory insect living in wood piles. Ant something. What about this? Oh, a gene variant is an allele. That came up in the crossword maybe a month ago. Candy with the slogan, not sorry, still not sure. Blank all that. Oh, she's all that. Spike Lee film. Uh, Natasha, right, right. Natasha. I'm not sure. Oh, Reese's candy? Why on earth is the slogan not sorry? What on earth, what on earth does that mean? It's so strange. Um, predatory insect, ant, oh, beetle maybe, ant beetle. I don't think I've ever heard of that, but it sort of fits maybe. Overlie, oh, to rest upon. That sounds right. Natasha, 
Au fatal? Boy, that doesn't even ring a bell at all, but it's entirely plausible as a cartoon character's, as a sort of evil cartoon character's last name. So a cause of switching positions. I don't think I've seen this one yet. Oh, a job offer. And then have we looked at this yet? I don't see it. No. Are you decent? Why didn't I look at that before? That was very straightforward. Okay. So frequently, quaintly would be oft. Denominator in the velocity formula. Well, velocity is what? Speed over time. So there we go. Like a birthday cake pre-party. Unlit, I guess. And a scotch, I think. I find the spelling of this word utterly confounding. <laughs> I think I, I think scotch was one of those words that I only ever saw written <laughs> well into my adulthood. And I find it completely baffling. I don't, because I've always heard it pronounced scotch as in a tad, a little bit of something, but it's spelled with an S-H, which is, looks like it should be scotch. I find it so strange. Maybe in some places it is pronounced gauche. I have no idea. So Singer Sumac. Oh, I think it might be Ema Sumac, YMA. Space Jam. Fly Me to the Moon, maybe? A jam is in a song, Fly Me to the Moon. Oh my goodness, that fits. Wow, I'm really pleased if that's correct. Sang along when you forgot the words. Uh, sang along when you forgot the words. Rhymed? No, I don't think so. Oh, hummed. Right. Right. Okay. I would have probably put sang in quotation marks because I don't really think humming is actually singing and there's no question mark or anything. To, well, there wouldn't be a question mark. It's not really a pun. It's just sort of, you know, you could imagine saying sang in a sort of slightly sarcastic way. But whatever, fair enough. We got there. Ingredient in healing gel is aloe, the official plant of the New York Times crossword. Much uh, to, to match our um, our uh, poem, the ode, and whatever else it was. Ot and or and alu. Ono and eno. Okay, small things that you pluck. Ukuleles. There we go. Scent of a woman, ah, some sort of perfume or, oh, Chanel, Chanel number no. nine sort of sounds familiar. So what is this? ETO, Ike's Domain. Is that some kind of boat? Chanel number no. nine. I'm not really sure. Is Orestes wrong? And these look right. I don't know. Oh, could this be T-U-I-L-E, maybe, the French fabric? Oh, boy, I'm not sure. Tough cross. Okay, let's keep going. Come back to it if I fail the puzzle, which is entirely possible. Uh, all right, so we have Latte Art Medium. Oh, maybe it's not nine. Maybe I'm thinking of Love Potion number nine, the old song. So this would be four, and Latte Art Medium is Foam. That's why. That's why I thought Chanel number no. nine was incorrect, which it certainly was. Uh, what did I do? What a disaster! Foam, not fam. And breakout band for Harry Styles and Zayn Malik. Familiarly, familiarly. I haven't a clue. Arch support. Arch support. Insole, maybe. Maybe it's not. It's five. Good lord! I'm going to go through every possible number until I get. Uh, the correct Chanel number. So this would be an insole, arch support in a shoe. Bill killers could be vetoes in a legislative session. Utopian could be Edenic, maybe, like Eden. A fragrant ring, yes, a lay, a sort of flower or necklace. And panic button of a sort is escape on a keyboard. And get the juices flowing. Oh, baste maybe is into baste meat with its own juices, perhaps. Lugosi of horror films, Bella Lugosi, as, uh, as memorably, depicted, memorably depicted in the film Ed Wood. Main artery is an aorta, also the name of a very obscure, I think Chicago era, psychedelic rock band, Aorta, who released, I think, two albums, the first of which was also named Aorta, and is an absolutely mind-bendingly 
weird and fascinating album. It is a great listen. Aorta by Aorta. Highly recommend that album if you want to listen to something really interesting and cool. Okay, a toke as in uh, a, uh, a joint is a hit. To describe in a negative way could be to tar someone's reputation, say. A beam for train tracks. Beam for train tracks. I'm not really sure. This looks like inertia. Reason the physicist stayed in bed, right? Inertia. That's actually quite clever because inertia is the principle that objects in motion prefer to stay in motion and objects at rest prefer to stay at rest. So the physicist stayed in bed because <laughs> the physicist at rest prefers to stay at rest. I might be misstating the exact wording, but that's basically the principle. Okay, so what is this? Euphemistic exclamation. Oh, I see. Heck. So euphemism for hell. And then listen is indeed oye. So there we go. That is the Sunday puzzle. Almost 40 minutes, as always, these Sunday puzzles really are quite the undertaking. So uh, a really fun theme. I like this a lot. This was this was fun. Uh, ended up being more straightforward than I expected. And actually, there didn't really end up being a revealer because you don't need one. It's sort of self-explanatory. The, the title, if anything, is sort of the revealer. You could imagine if this were not a Sunday puzzle and there weren't a title, you could imagine an alternative version of this puzzle in which Clue the movie was an answer in you know, either the middle of the puzzle or down here and would have been the revealer that explains how the theme works. But you don't really need that in this puzzle because it really does, it really is self-explanatory. Each one of these, each one of these movie titles is a clue and they're pretty clever. Field of Dreams is Psychoanalysis. Guys and Dolls, G.I. Joe's. I'm not crazy about this one. Uh, it feels redundant. The Guys and Dolls feels like the same, same thing to me. Star Trek is the red carpet. That's quite clever, I think. Uh, Top Gun is T-shirt cannon. Very good. I mean, these are almost all exceptional. It's really just that one that I'm not crazy about. The Imitation Game is Simon Says. A Man for All Seasons is a binge watcher. That is so good. Uh, a scent of a woman is Chanel number no. five, only only marred by my repeated inability to correctly number the Chanel, the perfume. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, Wayne's World is Gotham. That's pretty good. And Space Jam is Fly Me to the Moon. That's really, really good. I think Space Jam. Okay, so well done, Brandon Copy. I really, I thought this theme was fantastic. A, a nice, straightforward, simple theme, but incredibly clever and well executed. And, you know, a, uh, a perfectly solvable Sunday puzzle. Sunday's not always my favorite puzzles because they are so long, but uh, this was good. And the theme was top-notch, I think. So let me know how you fared with this Sunday puzzle from Brandon Copy. I hope you've been enjoying the series. If you have been, or if you're new, consider subscribing. Uh, subscribe to the series. You'll see these videos as they go up each day. And if you think you know someone who might enjoy it, please do pass it along, whether that's individually to uh, one friend or to your general habitat online, wherever that might be. And if you are particularly enjoying this series and you would like to become invested in its long-term sustainability, uh, head over to the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash uh, daily solve, where you can make a small monthly contribution starting at three pounds or the equivalent in your local currency to help support this series and get some things like bonus video solves of crosswords and special access to the Discord server. At higher levels, there are things like a, uh, a mug that will be designed with the input of people in that tier, as well as special recognition on this channel right now. So I would like to thank Joseph Schwalbach, and as always, the excellent Hood Monster for their generous support in making this series possible. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Hood Monster. I really do appreciate it. And thank you. Uh, I really do appreciate your support, I should say. And thank you so much also to everyone else who has backed the Patreon campaign. I think I might have said Kickstarter again at some point. I'm sorry if I did, but thank you for backing the Patreon campaign. And thank you to everyone for watching. Thanks for making this it, this far, especially on this lengthy Sunday.
video. I hope I'll see you tomorrow for the much, much shorter Monday video and much easier, smoother solve, probably typically the case on Monday. So please do join me then. But until that point, have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care. <laughs>